My name is Alice Ndong. I'm a nutrition and dietetic consultant. I studied nutrition and especially in management of diabetes and weight and obesity. So in this session, we are going to talk about how your diet can affect your blood sugar and how you can actually eat healthy, enjoy your food and still control your blood sugar. So diabetes is a condition that affects the way your body uses food. If you take food, every food we take becomes sugar. Your starches, that is your bread, your ugali, your potatoes, and vegetables, and fruit, and dairy, all of it becomes sugar, 100%. Your proteins, that's your meat, your chicken, fish, 60% becomes sugar. And then fat and oils, 10% become sugar. So everything you eat becomes sugar. So what happens on a normal day, when you take food, it becomes sugar. Insulin is produced to put the sugar into the cells because the body uses sugar for energy. But when you're diabetic, it means the natural process takes place. You've eaten, there's a lot of sugar, but there's probably not sufficient insulin to help the sugar get into the cells. So you end up having a lot of blood sugar circulating in the bloodstream. And that is what now is called diabetes, when there's a lot of sugar. If we do a blood sugar test and we find that the blood sugar is 10, a random blood sugar, then you're definitely a diabetic patient. Then there's also the stage before diabetic, which is called pre-diabetic stage. So a diabetic person must control their sugar using diet, exercise, and medication. There are two types of diabetes. There is type 1, which the person is insulin dependent. So they will need to be always on insulin. It used to be seen in children, but right now it's also seen in adults. Okay? So it's no longer a child diabetes. Anybody can get type 1. Then we have type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is they do not rely on insulin to manage their sugar. They will be given some medication to help production of insulin. They'll be given some medication to slow down the, the I mean, to, in, to, to, to increase absorption of insulin. So, but sometimes if the sugars are not properly controlled, then they will take insulin. Diet affects uh, management of, your, di of your, di your diabetes very much. Because if we just recall again, everything you eat becomes sugar. So it means you must be watch your portions. If you eat too much food, then your sugars will be high. Let's say you eat five slices of bread, the sugars will be high. You eat one slice of bread, the sugars will be less. Okay? So you must be able to control your intake. But there's of course, everybody gets confused. Like, oh, some people, the old school of thought is don't eat any starches. They just eat proteins, okay? But according to current studies, a diabetic can eat anything. A diabetic can even take sugar in their tea, okay? But you must go through lots of education for you to understand how to control your sugars. So first and foremost, you can eat everything. Why do we eat? Bodybuilding, energy, and protective. So they need to eat fruits. They need to eat vegetables, they need to eat starch, they need to eat meat, proteins, they need to eat everything really because the cell must be healthy. But the question is now how much and quantities, okay? So if you talk about still how much, quality of food they eat is also very, very important because if you have a processed one slice of white bread and you have sweet potato, the one slice, the, the white bread is going to be used faster, meaning it's going to give you more sugar. For example, one slice of bread is going to give you this much fiber. And white bread, one slice of wholemeal bread is going to give you that much fiber. One slice, just the same amount of sweet potato is going to give you that much fiber. So you can see the difference in the fiber content. So it means the sweet potato would actually be better. But what happens, some diabetes have been misled. As long as something tastes sweet, they should not eat it. But that's not true, okay? The, the sweetness of sweet potato is natural flavor. It will still become sugar, okay? Let's say if you eat something very, you know, uh, let's say beans, they don't taste sweet, but they also become sugar, okay? So the higher the, the, higher the fiber content of food, the better. So it is important for them to know the quality food. So when the food is processed, you know, when you eat very white flour, that is, your sugar is going to rise higher. And when you eat wholemeal flour, like if you take the maize to the portion meal, 
get it from the shamba, take it to the mosho meal, that whole meal, nothing of it has been removed. So that is still good, okay? This is how you should eat. Half of your plate is vegetables, and then your, a quarter is starch, and that is your protein, your meat or your beans. So ideally you should arrange your plate. You always need more vegetables in your diet and less starch. For men, maybe they will have a third a plate. So we'll draw the plate into a third. So a third starch, a third protein, and a third vegetables. So that way they're able to control the portions because everything you eat becomes sugar. So the higher the portions, the, the, the higher your sugars are going to be. And the, then of course you'll develop complications. There are certain foods that will increase somebody else's sugar and not increase somebody else's sugar. For example, I've had clients who, when they take a banana, their sugars will really go high. But there's somebody else who take a banana and they're fine. There's somebody who take a pineapple and their sugars go high, okay? So in fruits intake, the, people, the ones which are known for actually increasing their sugar are actually pineapple and mangoes. Those are known for diabetics. So if they do eat those, then they need to eat very small portions or they can as well avoid them. But if you have a glucose machine and you're able to take your sugars, which is what I would highly recommend for those people who are diabetic, if you can, it would be good to have it so you can be able to, to monitor your own sugar. So you will be able to identify what actually increases your blood sugar. So the, you need to do identify what actually makes your sugars go high and then you need to stay away from that. So diabetics are also told, do not take sugar, okay? Why are you told not to take sugar? Because sugar is already, it's, we can say it's already pre-digested. So it's not going to go through digestion, because if you take food, it's going to go through digestion, start slowly, and then it's going, your sugar is going to rise. But if you take sugar, it's just going to be absorbed. So it's going to actually shoot your sugars very high, okay? So that's why they're told not to take sugar. But if you take a teaspoon of sugar, in your tea, it's probably not going to be a problem. But if you take a lot of sugar, then it's going to be a problem. For example, things like uh, soft drinks, sodas, is a no-no. Because you will get so much sugar in just a glass of drink. This is like 10 teaspoons of sugar in a soda. So obviously, that is definitely going to raise your blood sugar. So the only time you're told to take sugar is when your sugars go very, very low. Okay? Um, we get, it's called hypoglycemia, where it can happen because of two reasons. One, you took your medication and you, do not, you didn't eat. Remember, the medication is to control the sugar. Where is this sugar coming from? It's coming from your food. So you take your medication and you don't eat, you're going to go get a low blood sugar. And low blood sugar can be very dangerous because you, you can actually faint. It's because you don't have any energy. So you get blurry vision, you sweat, you shake and tremble, and you can faint, okay? So when you get something like that, when you start getting low sugar, then that's the time you need to take a soda. But remember, this soda is going to be absorbed very quickly. So you also need to go just find food. But to prevent low blood sugars, and most diabetics I've talked to are afraid of low blood sugars because it can be dangerous. You can be driving, and then you get it. And they are, you're encouraged to keep you know, some sweet or something sugary in the car or in your pocket or in your handbag, work with something. But to prevent you from getting low blood sugars, you, need, you should not skip your meals. You should take three meals a day for snacks, for those who are allowed to have snacks, yes. But breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you need to be very, very consistent. You need to be taking them more or less at the same time. Because the drugs, they work according to time. They work maybe eight hours. So if you take your breakfast, then you take your lunch. You're going to get a hypoglycemia, okay? Because you took medication in the morning, and that medication is still working for eight hours. You're not going to eat eight hours later. So it's very important to be consistent with meal time. So the only time, you know, if you eat breakfast at eight, always try for it to be around eight. If you eat your lunch at one, always try for it to be at one. If you eat your dinner at eight, always make sure it's that time. Because that way you control your blood sugars much, much better than if you eat breakfast at eight, lunch at four, dinner late, you know, and then you keep changing, changing. No, that is not good. You know, should diabetics eat differently from everybody else? No. Um, most of the time you find families, especially with a child who's diabetic, you find that the child is made to eat whole meal and everything, then the rest of the people eat something else. That's not good at all. It's actually not supportive. Because the difference is, ideally, that's how everybody should eat. You should eat 
a balanced meal, you should eat whole meal products. It's only that diabetics need to pay more attention to that. But that's how everybody eats. So that's actually eating more healthy than everybody else. So you should not separate meals from a diabetic person because if let's say the father of the house or the mother of the house is diabetic, it means all the children have a risk of diabetes. So what's good for him is good for everybody. So it's not good to separate the food because what is important is the food needs to be cooked and it doesn't have to be tasteless, okay? Some people go to extreme. You go and have boiled meat, you boil your vegetables. Remember, everything you eat becomes sugar. It doesn't matter how you cook it. If you eat boiled vegetables, you eat large portions, you're going to get a lot of sugar. You eat boiled rice, it's still a lot of sugar. You have the same amount of boiled rice and the same amount of fried rice, the sugar release there is going to be the same. So you should not go to the extreme of boiling food. No, the food can still be tasty. What is important is the amount of fat that goes into the food. Because for people who are diabetic, they also have risk factors of getting a heart problem. They have a risk factors of getting a kidney problem. They have risk factors of getting blind, you know, and getting an amputation. So, so it is important for them to actually eat healthy to control those things. So number one, when cooking your food, it's the fat content. Your animal protein already has fat. So ideally, you should not fry it because what makes that meat tasty or the chicken tasty is the spice, okay? For example, if I can show this, this is how much fat you get from half a kilo of lean steak. Lean steak. So if this is how much you get in lean steak, how about regular meat? Regular meat, of course, has a lot more fat. So what makes that food tasty is a spice. So you just need to spice it and enjoy it. But vegetables must be fried. Your green vegetables especially, because they have, your green vegetables have your fat-soluble vitamins. So what that means is if you don't fry this, you're not getting your fat-soluble vitamins. So do not be an extremist. You don't need to boil food. You still need to eat healthy portions, and you still need to eat tasty food. It's just the quantities that matter. When should a diabetic take fruit? Ideally, some literature says it is better to take your fruit with your meals, okay? It is, you can take, your, ideally, the, if you're being managed strictly, you should eat three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and you should have your fruit with your meals, okay? But for some people, depending on the control of the sugars, they can actually have their fruit at snack time, you know, like 10 o'clock have one, one fruit, an afternoon snack have one fruit. But it is possible for you to take three meals a day and control your sugar. Some people take many, many meals a day. That's not recommended because every time you eat, the sugar rises. So you take breakfast, you have a rise. You take 10 o'clock, rise. Lunch time, rise. Four o'clock, rise. Dinner, rise. Those are too many sugar sp spikes, okay? So it is important to actually train yourself to have three meals a day. That is actually what is recommended. With children, it's different. You might have to manage them differently. They may need to take their, you know, they may need to eat a lot of starch because they need a lot more energy and they are much, a lot more active. So they need to eat differently. So this is for, we are talking about adults. The children might need to be, to be managed differently. Exercise is very important. During exercise, your body uses energy to exercise. And that energy that the body uses is actually sugar. There are other types of energy that are also used. So if you want to control your blood sugar and even reduce the medications that you're going to take, you actually need to exercise. And exercise doesn't mean you have to go to the gym. In fact, what I always say, if you can't walk briskly for one hour, you're not fit to be in the gym. So walking is the most important form of exercise. For those who are very well controlled and have normal weight, they can walk 30, 45 minutes, three times a week, and make it consistent. What's important here, you need to be consistent with your meal times, you need to be consistent with your exercise. It's not one time off. If somebody is overweight, if they lost weight, then they will be able to control their sugar. And if, depending on how weighty they are, if they lost enough weight, significant weight, they can actually be able to control their sugar on diet and exercise. Some people, when their sugars are high, they do not take medication. A lot of people are afraid to take medication for, to control their blood sugar or even blood pressure. But there are certain levels of blood sugars that you actually must be on medication.
And that medication is actually a protection. Because when the sugar is high and you're, uh, you're, 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 you're actually classified as diabetic, it means it's just like an acid. The blood sugar is so high, it's like an acid. So it is actually corroding your blood vessels. And that is why it is called a blood vessel disease. Because it will destroy the blood vessels going to the eye, and that's how come you have an eye problem or you can get blind. It will destroy blood vessels going to the heart, you get a heart problem. To the kidney, you get a kidney problem. To the penis, for men, they'll get a sexual dysfunction. And then also to your limbs, so you get up, you end up, you know, that, that the blood vessel is destroyed, there's no blood going there, it dies, and then it's amputated, okay? So it is very, very important to, if the doctor says you need to be on medication, you need to be on medication, okay? And then, of course, there are all these herbalists that are out there and telling people, oh, take the herbs and your diabetes can get cured. It's an organ problem, you know. So sometimes it's, you can't cure it by just eating something. It's the organ that needs to be, to be treated. So I can say some of those things, yes, they, they can control the sugars, but we don't have scientific evidence that if you take so much stinging nettle, your blood sugar is going to be reduced by this much. We don't have such data. So if you decide you want to take herbal, you need to continue monitoring your blood sugar. So if your blood sugar is not going down, you need to stop and take. So don't, don't do herbal and you're not monitoring your blood sugar because you can really get into serious trouble. For example, um, one test that you can also do to check if your sugars is, uh, the doctors always order for it, it's called HB1C. So it's a test that's done every three months to check if your sugars are high. It, they, it is uh, between 3 to 6% for adults and up to 7 for children. So if you go check your HbA1c and then you find that it is 10, that's very high. It means you actually have a risk of getting complications. Sometimes people end up taking so much drug. What I realize with some of my clients is people don't pay attention to their fluid intake.